the go wing, baby! We ride the go wing! So in case you're not aware, I made a bobber motorcycle out of a 1982 Honda Goldwing, which is a big honking motorcycle to begin with. So we chopped a whole bunch of stuff off it, took the fairings and the saddlebags and all that off of it, and made it into something different, something custom, something I think is a lot of fun. But the real question here is, how much did it cost me to do that? And the short answer is $3,000. $3,059 to be exact. And that is the total cost, including the $600 I spent to acquire the bike in the first place. Almost half of the $3,000 spent on this bike, $1,240, went to engine-related parts. And all of that money is maintenance-related costs, because I didn't do any engine modifications on this bike. Now, I did buy a bike with an engine that wasn't running, which may have been a bad idea, because I possibly could have saved myself money by acquiring a bike that had a working engine in the first place, as long as I didn't spend more than $1,800 on getting the bike and a working engine. If I didn't have to put, that's theoretical, if I didn't have to put any money into the engine, which is unlikely in a bike of that vintage. So there's that consideration, and that's one potential area where I might have been able to save myself some money, if I were to do this again, I definitely would start with a running bike in the first place. That is my number one tip if doing a gold wing project. So that's one way of looking at the expenditures on this build. And another way is that I could have easily spent more money on higher end parts for this bike. Many other builds that I'm aware of are twice as expensive as this one. The turn signals I use were bottom of the barrel cheap at $10 per pair. And these are cheap plastic knockoffs of Moto Gadget's bar and turn signals which, if you buy those brand name ones, are $200 per pair. And though I don't regret the choice of going cheap on this aspect of the build, I might at some point. This one, I must have kicked it or something, and look at that, came right out. And for me personally, the way I looked at this build going into it, and as I was going through it, was that the outcome of the build was questionable from the start, essentially. As this build was more about challenging myself for personal growth to learn new skills, than it was about having a finished motorcycle. Now, if I had done a motorcycle build previously and knew that I would have a positive outcome on this build, I would have been more willing to make a greater financial commitment to higher end parts and have a better product at the end here. But for me, on this build, I just wanted to see if I could do it. And so that involved a lot of parts that were basically just fill-in parts that functioned the way I wanted them to, that looked the way I wanted them to, but with the least amount of financial commitment just in case this thing didn't work out. So I made a number of financial choices along those lines in order to save me from the possibility of spending too much money on a failed project. For example, I would have loved to have utilized a Moto Gadget M unit on this bike because the M unit allows you, it's basically a fuse box panel thing, computer sort of thing that goes on that you wire everything into and it allows you to program your light functions on here, your turn signals, how much they blink. I had this fun little aspect of this build where I have these additional taillights that, that blink and then go steady. And the Moto Gadget, I could have programmed all that stuff into it and without having anything additional. And it allows you to use your phone as a key to start the bike as well as a bunch of other fun techie things. But it's $250 and I chose not to use that, not to spend that much money and just use the stock fuse panel because, well, I could make the bike work that way and so there was no reason to do anything extra. I tried basically not to do anything extra on this build. And it's a number of decisions like this along the way that kept the cost down. Not that the build couldn't have been even cheaper because the actual cost to customize the bike, to chop the frame, build the new swing arm, and do all the suspension stuff on there and all the little lights and all that stuff, was only, was less, less than $1,000. Meaning that if you happen to have a bike, a Gold Wing, you already owned one, somebody gave you one for free, it was in great running condition, and somehow was lower mileage, and you didn't have to do any maintenance stuff on it, you could customize it like this for less than $1,000 in theory. And part of that theory is that you have access to all the tools. You already own the tools or are able to borrow tools from other people for free because one of the aspects of this build that helped me save a lot of money was that I had access to a wide arrangement of tools for free. Now my dad just happened to be a mechanic and so I lucked out there. Now for the average person, taking on a new project like this is always gonna 
require the acquisition of new tools because there will be vehicle specific tools. Any, anytime you're trying to do a new skill or do something you haven't done before, it's inevitably going to require a new tool that you don't already own. So the tool expense on this build certainly could have been a lot higher than it was for me. And another question I've gotten is how much time did it take me to build this bike? And in general terms, it took me about eight months, but in reality, I spent a lot of time. I didn't have any extra time in those eight months. I spent all of my time working on this bike. All in all, I estimate, I didn't keep track of it, but I estimate I spent somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200 hours on this bike. And so those sticklers out there are immediately going to realize that that, that is a large time investment and that that money, if I had spent it at a job, could have translated into a completely brand new bike or more than one new bike. But those people doing such a basic calculation would be overlooking or ignoring the skill building aspect of this build. And that was really the big value in this project was learning how to weld and learning how to fabricate with metal. There's a lot of value in that for sure. All in all, I think $3,000 is a good value for this bike I've got behind me. For comparison's sake, to try and acquire a bike like this without doing any of the work yourself. The most comparable vehicle you could buy brand new is uh, that looks like this is a Triumph Bobber. And Triumph Bobbers sell for about $12,000 brand new, which is expensive, but of course there is the added value of a brand new bike, which has no miles on it. In theory, it's gonna be much more reliable and have a greater longevity than this bike will just because of the high mileage aspect of the engine on it. So that is something to consider as well. So what do you think? Did I get a good value here or did I spend too much money?